Hello, my name is Joe Stackhouse, and this is my second video here at the Windows 7 forums. I'm going to cover a little feature called Ready Boost. Um, this feature was introduced in Vista. It allows you to use a USB flash drive uh, at the correctly rated speed. It has to be a flash or a fast flash drive uh, to do this. And what Windows does is it caches some uh, important data as far as startup of the computer and certain applications when they start up. It um, caches kind of like virtual memory, sort of, but some important data on the startup of these items and speeds up your system. Um, I've done a couple tests on this, and it um, seems like 4 gigs is probably about the maximum size. It's really worth it, and I'm going to show you how to do this. Uh, you go ahead and plug in your USB flash drive, um, and I usually cancel the autoplay. I don't let Windows Ready Boost go through there. I actually go through the administrative tools, and you can find this in your control panel. Um, but go to Computer Management. You want to make sure the drive is assigned a drive letter, and we're going to go to Disk Management here. Now when you buy a USB flash drive anymore, a lot of them are Ready Boost certified or whatnot. I'm not sure that that's actually a real certification from Microsoft. It probably is. Um, but you have to have a fast one. And you can really tell, especially if you buy off of sites like Tiger Direct or Newegg, look at the user reviews and the specifications on it. Does it work well with Ready Boost? Um, as you can see here, this is the USB flash stick. It's my letter R, my drive letter R here, that I'm going to use for this. Uh, by default, they're usually NTFS or FAT32 formatted. Um, and in Vista, you would have to use NTFS or FAT32 for this feature. However, in Vista, or I'm sorry, in Windows 7, we're in Windows 7 Professional here, um, all versions of Windows 7 support this feature. Um, I found that the XFAT format is the best way to go, and 7 actually allows you to do that. So we're going to go ahead and format our drive, or reformat it. And we're going to give it a title. We'll just call it Ready Boost. Again, I'm going to use the XFAT format. The differences here are this is a new format that, um, well, new to Windows at least. I think some distributions of Linux support it. Um, but it's a new format that supports uh, different size files, bigger files. Um, but it seems to have a little bit of performance uh, boost on flash drives. Uh, especially when deleting files and accessing different parts of a uh, file's memory. And since ReadyBoost is going to turn this drive into one big um, file, basically, that it's going to use for all this cache, then we're going to use XFAT. Now, you can use NTFS and actually store files on this flash drive and ReadyBoost, but I, um, I think most of us that's a, that really see the benefits from ReadyBoost have a dedicated stick just for it. In fact, if you do like I did, um, I have a USB add-in card on my PC, and it's a PCI card, um, and it actually has an internal USB header. That's really common if you purchase one. And so my USB flash stick that's dedicated to ReadyBoost actually sits inside my computer case. So I don't even see it. I don't have to worry about bumping it, removing it, whatever. It didn't cost much. Um, I think I paid 15, 20 bucks for it. It was rated for like 200X or 300X speed. Um, so it's a pretty good drive. I'm going to do a quick format. XFAT gave it my volume label. Going to confirm that it's going to overwrite all the data on the drive, since I don't really care. And there's my drive. Now, um, I'm just going to go ahead and right click my drive and go to properties. And you'll see a ready boost tab here. Um, and you click on Ready Boost. It says this device cannot be used. Um, it's probably because it needs to be retested. Vista, or I'm sorry, Vista and Windows 7. They do a quick speed test on the drive to see if it qualifies. So I'm going to do test again. Now that's interesting because I just just before this tutorial, I was using the same exact drive for Ready Boost. So I'm not sure why. Windows 7 is not allowing me. Let's try it one more time here. Well, that's interesting. Half of the. Well, 
I'm going to pause this video now and try to figure out why Windows 7 is not going to let me use this device that I was using not more than five minutes ago for Ready Boost. Um, I'll probably try to reformat it or whatnot. Uh, I'm not sure yet, and we'll see how it goes. All right, I'm back. Um, all I simply had to do was format the drive again. Uh, it's kind of a glitch there. I don't know how that happened. Um, obviously, it's a Windows 7 bug of some sort. Simply reformatted it yet again, and same parameters, XFAT, gave it my, my title here, as you can see, and the drive is now showing up correctly uh, as it was before. And now I've uh, got my options here. You can dedicate the device to ReadyBoost. Uh, Vista does not have this option that I'm aware of. Um, this will dedicate all the amount of memory. Uh, it's a four gig drive, so we got, you know, eh, 3,814 megs. That should be a pretty good size. I wouldn't go any higher. Uh, than four gigs <clears throat> no matter how much ram you have or how little ram you have i don't think it's really going to be beneficial to you um you can also say just use this device and you can actually pick how many megabytes you would like it to use um i would say i i'd probably stick with at least two gigs if you're going to share this drive with other files um, but like i said really having a dedicated drive um, is probably the best route to go so we're going to dedicate to ready boost we're going to hit apply it's configuring the cache file. Hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and explore this drive real quick and show you what Windows has done with it. Um, by default, it, it's important to note that even though you see it's made a ReadyBoost cache file here on the drive, and it's made it about 4 gigs, by default, ReadyBoost is not going to help you right out of the box. It actually learns your habits, watches the applications that you launch, watches as you reboot the computer, and tries to intelligently decide what gets thrown in the cache. Uh, often it's places on your hard drive that get bottlenecked and are often in, you know, hit for reads of data. And um, you know, SATA hard drives, just um, they're good, the, but the flash drive, it can really pull that data out quickly. Uh, a lot more quickly than the head having to seek across to platters on your hard drive. Um, there's another important thing to note though once you've started this process, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you now go disable ReadyBoost, I think it has to relearn. I'm not sure I'll have to look on Microsoft's specs on how, how ReadyBoost works, but I'm not really going to be able to show you too much on um, the speed increase. In fact, uh, there's, if, you, if you Google ReadyBoost, um, there's, there's tons of places out there that have tested it. I know personally on my system, my boot time goes down by about six to eight seconds. Um, launching major applications such as Visual Studio, uh, stuff like that, um, the speed up time is just tremendously faster. It's really noticeable. Um, so I think it's worth it for 15, 20 bucks uh, if, if you got the extra cash to do this. Um, I've also, if you look here, it's the R drive. Um, I'm gonna close out of this and actually go to my computer actually and you can search on Google on how to do this you can actually hide drive letters from Windows Explorer and since mine's a dedicated drive I've opted uh, through the registry to hide my R drive um, I also hide a couple other drives that just users don't need to see and I don't want to be bothered with really so you don't even see the R drive here in my case normally you would still see it here you'd see your your title of whatever you formatted the drive with and um, that would be it so I hope this was informative. Uh, if anybody has any comments, uh, let me know. And, uh, or if anybody knows more about the specifications on exactly what ReadyBoost decides to, that'd be great to know. I know I do have, there's a lot of people out there that'll say, have above three gigs of RAM, ReadyBoost doesn't really help you. Uh, I am running the 2-bit version of Win Professional um, with four gigs of RAM, and I still notice the boost with a four gig ReadyBoost cache. Uh, especially, like I said, when launching major applications that have a lot of files that they read uh, off the drive when they start. Uh, also, during boot time, it seems to help quite a bit. Um, other than that, once you set it up, I've not really had any glitches. I do want to mention a couple things um, about is it working? And especially in my case, if you've hidden the drive letter, uh, how do you know it's working? There's a couple utilities out there that say that they give you the statistics on that and they probably work better with Vista than Windows 7 since 7 is newer. But I've kind of found my own way of finding out if it's working. And the way I do that is I run the performance monitor. I'm just gonna use a little quick search here on the start menu. 
and I think it's the performance information and tools here. We'll launch that up. And actually, no, that's not it. Maybe it's the other performance tool here. Performance monitor, maybe? I don't think that's it either. Let's find out here. No, that's the old-fashioned performance monitor. You probably could use performance monitor. In fact, I think you can. Let's see here. We'll add another. Let it populate the counter list here. Oh, yeah, there's lots of counters. Now let's see if there's one for Ready Boost in here. Uh, if I were Microsoft, I'd make one. Yeah, there it is, Ready Boost Cache. So if I increase that, you get all sorts of counters here. I'm going to add them all. Why not, right? Hit OK. And now I can see a little graph showing um, what Ready Boost is doing reading, writing. Um, You'll see in the beginning when you first enable, it writes quite a bit of data to that drive periodically, and eventually you'll see mostly reads as it tries to read that information faster than it would off of your hard drive. Uh, there's another way, and it might take me a minute to figure out where it's at. Let me pause while I do that. All right, I found um, it's actually called the Performance Monitor. You can probably get to the control panel. I'm just gonna type in monitor here in the quick search uh, option. And it's the resource monitor, not the performance monitor, but the resource monitor. This is the way that I did it in Vista because um, the way that I showed you earlier with the performance counters, for some reason my Vista installation did not have them. I don't know if it was just a, something that happened to me or if um, it does not have those counters. Let me expand this a little bit here. You get all sorts of goodies in here. Uh, what you're going to want to do is expand the disk section. And you're going to look for your, actually let me maximize this. Your, re your ready boost drive letter and the cache file. And you'll see that it's reading and writing to it. Um, and it does it quite a bit, especially in the beginning, um, almost constantly, which is good. It means it's populating that data and learning my habits and trying to boost my system speed. Um, as far as I can tell, that's all I have for now on this. Um, I'll try to make some notes with this on how to hide drive letters. That works on XP, Vista, and Windows 7 um, so that you don't have to deal with that. And again, my name is Joe Stackhouse, and I hope you learned a little bit about ReadyBoost.